All right, good morning, YouTube. I just finished our morning farm chores. I went out and checked on the livestock and did a walk of the property and everything like I always do. And now I'm just kind of relaxing inside. Um, this video is going to be kind of like a rambling thing, uh, mainly because I, I have a lot of confusion about the current state of things in America. Um, I'm going to start this off by saying I'm not a Republican. I'm not a Democrat. I, I don't believe in our democracy. Uh, so I'm 40 years old, right? In the time that I have been alive, I have seen two presidents lose the popular vote, which is essentially the vote of the people, and win the electoral college vote. So I don't believe that this is a democracy. If we vote for someone and then somebody else says, no, this guy won... And again, I'm not Democrat, I'm not Republican. I, I am basically indifferent and disgusted by the whole system. But I, what I'm having trouble understanding is I, I woke up this morning. It's Like I said, it's Saturday, so I laid in bed for a little bit and just kind of chilled. And it was, it, was an, it was a nice morning. And I got to let my dogs out because they're going to make noise. Um... So I was just laying in bed like I do. Um, I did my Bible study. And again, I'm not an overly conservative Christian. I I have, and I know this is going to sound like a, a racist saying, I have lots of black friends. Two of the people that I respect the most are, um, they're a gay couple. And I work with them on the ambulance. And they're just, they've been together longer than both of my marriages combined. So there's, there's clearly love and respect and, and commitment there. And as someone who is now married again and in a loving, respectful relationship, I respect that and I understand that. Uh, but as I said, I was sitting there doing, just sitting in bed, looking at my phone, which is... <laughs> Let's be honest, that's usually where all the problems start, looking at your phone. Um, and I came across this article about, um, there was a woman who, I guess she was on a plane, and it was her, her toddler, and her mother, and one of the flight attendants came over and asked her a question or told her to do something because the baby was crying. And then another flight attendant came over and she misgendered the first flight attendant, the one that came over before. So she was kicked off the plane and they said it was a hate crime. That's my dog hacking over there. One of my dogs hacking over there. Um, I, what I don't get about the about the current state of affairs in America is so when I was growing up all I ever wanted was to be left alone to live life my way if no get out of there Sadie get out of there just trying to go after the cat litter um all I ever wanted was to be left alone to live my life. And I realized that as a straight, white, American male, I'm of the oppressor class. Like, I get that. I have... Uh, white privilege has been something I've had 
my entire life. Like, I, I don't know what it's like to be a minority. I don't know what it's like to be a homosexual or a transsexual or whatever the word is for people who are born one thing but think they're another. Um, and I, I, I realize that that is not something that I understand. But growing up, um, in the family that I grew up in, I, I never wanted what they wanted for me, right? Like, I didn't want to go to college. I didn't want to get a job as a teacher. I, I wanted to do what I'm doing now, farming and construction. Uh, and I wanted to do EMS, which I ended up doing as a paramedic in Boston for a while. Um, so... They were not happy with any... God, Dipsy, can you stop? They were not happy with any of that. Um, I wanted to live in the middle of nowhere. They were living in a suburban city sprawl, and they thought that that was, like, the best life imaginable, and how dare I don't want that. I didn't want them to approve of my choices. I didn't want them to understand why I wanted something different. I just wanted something different and I wanted to be left alone. So that's that's my feeling on things. And and for the bulk of my life I have looked at it as I don't care what these people think. I don't care what these people call me. I don't care what they feel about who I am. I just want to be left alone. I don't want them to call me this or that or call me whatever, identify as this or that, because I don't care. Um, I'm looking at the current state of things in America and again, I'm not a Democrat I'm not a Republican, I am completely indifferent to the, the federal government of America, um, if it were up to me, we'd all be living under the town meeting system and that would be how everything is done, true democracy uh, not this farce that we have here that's just kind of ridiculous and kind of insulting Honestly, um, we elect a figurehead every four years who has virtually no power because there's no term limits on Congress or the Senate, and they just do whatever they want. Um, occasionally, that figurehead puts people in power that will do his bidding for the next however many years in the form of the Supreme Court. The Supreme Court. Um, I'm, I'm a Christian, and I believe that abortion should be legal. I don't see abortion as an option for myself because I'm a Christian. Not everyone is Christian. Not everyone is able to have kids. Not everyone is, is at a point where they should have kids. In the cases of rape, in the cases of like incest and stuff, this person has suffered enough. Why on earth would you want to have them give birth to this child that was forced on them? Um, as a Christian... I don't believe in abortion, so I wouldn't be involved in the decision to make, to, to get an abortion. At the same time, I'm a man. I don't have to, I don't have to carry a baby to term. I, I don't have to do any of that. So it's not my place to tell someone else what they can and can't do. Because my religion tells me that it's wrong. Um, 
this is kind of this like i said this is kind of going to be rambling but this is just there's a lot of confusion in my mind right now that i kind of got to get out there and that was a cat that was angus the house panther um everybody's going crazy because there's going to be severe thunderstorms the next two days and they can feel it and they act like idiots but as i was saying um I don't have faith in our political system anymore. In the Constitution that all these conservatives bang on and on about, it says there's a separation of church and state. That's like one of the founding principles of this country, and we are slowly becoming, not slowly, faster and faster, honestly, uh, look up the GOP Project 2025 plan. My son told me about that the other day. Um, that's that's kind of scary. Um, America was never meant to be a theocracy. People are not meant to be ruled by a theocracy. We've gone to several unsuccessful wars against Muslim nations because they were th- because they were theocracies and they were oppressive and it was i mean there were other reasons like Gen- uh, eisenhower said if war becomes profitable you will always have war you can always find a reason to go beat the shit out of somebody if you're going to make money doing it oil muslim war on terror It's all bullshit. Uh, I mean, we're we're supposed to be the greatest nation on earth and we haven't won a war since the Second World War. And we didn't really win it. We just... We were an influx of manpower. It's like... It's like when a fire department calls mutual aid and they're fighting this fire for like two hours and uh, the last half hour mutual aid shows up and they're like pulling the ceilings and shit. They didn't, they didn't put the fire out. They, they were the manpower that was needed at the end, and that's what we were in both world wars. Um, somehow, globalization happened because of that, and now we're involved in everybody's business when we can't even manage our own business. So, to get back to basically what I was saying here, the confusion that I'm having is... When did America become, why did America become a nation where I have to recognize you as what you think you are instead of a nation where I don't have to care? And I'm not, I, like, I, I have no problems with people who are one gender and think they're another, I don't care. It it does not bother me. It does not affect me. It has no bearing whatsoever on my life. You do you. I'll do me. I'm going to be me. You be you. Uh live your truth, boo-boo, or whatever the the little meme says and that kind of stuff. I don't care. You have the right to do that. You have the right to identify as whatever you want. Non-binary, the gender that you're not physically the gender. I don't care. That's your right. Just like it's my right to live the life that my family didn't, didn't want for me. And, you know, to grow my own food and to to raise my own livestock and stuff like that. I don't want someone coming in and telling me that I can't do that. I don't think anyone should go in and tell other people that they can't do their, their gender, trans, whatever. I don't even know what the words are. I don't understand why if someone makes a mistake and calls someone what they appear to be 
why they get in trouble for that. People can call me a redneck. They can call me an idiot. They can call me gay. They can call me straight. Obviously, I, I am straight. I'm married to a woman. I don't care if you think I'm gay. I don't care if you think I'm a woman. I don't care. I know who I am. And if you know who you are, why does it matter what other people call you? I'm, I, I don't know why I did this, but for some reason, and this is going back into the, the confusion that I have uh, about everything in this country right now. I, I decided that I was going to watch clips from the debate between Biden and Trump. Out of the two of them, I would prefer another four years of Biden. Um, just because I don't really, I don't trust Trump. I don't trust anyone who was a, is, a, is was a sleazy 80s millionaire from New York City. Um, I don't trust big business. I don't trust people who clearly do things for profit. And yes, Biden is doing that too. I understand that. And right now Biden is trying to out Republican the Republicans with his with his whole new thing on immigration and this and that and I'll be honest with you, I have worked with illegal aliens. Um, guys from Mexico, guys from Guatemala, who, um, they were here illegally. These were some of the best guys I've ever worked with. I mean, they taught me how to do things that I didn't know how to do. Uh, if I was cold, they'd give me a jacket if my uh, this was in aquaculture, if I got wet, they give me dry clothes. Uh, if I didn't have food, they give me some of their food. These these are people. These are real people, and they're really caring people. Um, and everybody's like, oh, they're getting all these benefits. They're getting all this. They're getting all that. Does it really matter? Is there really going to be Medicare when we're old enough to take advantage of it? Is there going to be Social Security when we're old enough to take advantage of it? No. The baby boomers are sucking it all up. The baby boomers have all the money in their bank accounts and they don't do anything. And they just don't touch anything. So all the money is locked up. And that's why you're paying $7 for eggs at the store when I'm getting them for free out of my bond. Um, so I watched clips of this debate. Now, I'm not a Republican. I am not a Democrat. Um, when it comes to it, I tend to prefer um, Democratic leadership over Republican. But at the same time, I know it's all a scam. I know it's all fake. I know it doesn't really matter who the president is because Congress has all the power. Um, so I'm watching these clips from this debate and you've got one guy who is... It was like he was on Ambien. Like he was just... Uh, yeah, I'm going to do this with this. I'm... I'm um, uh, he couldn't form a cognitive coherent sentence. And then you've got a guy who's a game show host who's like, my opponent's an idiot. He doesn't know what he's saying and I don't know what he's saying. It's like you've got two extremes. You've got one guy who's clearly senile and you've got one guy who's clearly crazy. Like... This is the best we can do. This is the best this country has to offer for the next four years. A senile old man 
who can't form a coherent response to a question, or a game show host who speaks in sound bites? I mean, what the hell? This is what this is what's gonna lead the nation. And you know what? I honestly think we're gonna end up with Trump again. Why is there no middle ground? Why is there no moderate? Why is it either a theocracy or Sodom and Gomorrah? Where is the where is the middle ground? Where is the person who is moderate and doesn't go to extremes? We don't need extreme leadership. We need calm. We need to be left alone. We don't need Christian beliefs forced on us. We don't need uber liberal. Iber- I can't even talk. I'm I'm Joe Biden right now. We don't need an ultra-conservative Christian government. We don't need an ultra-liberal, do-whatever-you-want government. We need middle ground. And where is that? Where did that go? Why is that gone? Hi, Greta. Yes, hello. This is Greta, my black lab. I'll do a video on the labs later, but um, I just, I don't understand why we're so polarized. And at the same time, I do understand why we're so polarized. You, you got, you got one party that wants to bring it back to the 1900s where women are in the, in the kitchen making babies barefoot. And you get another one where guys can be girls and, and all of this. And, and it's it's recognized by the rest of society as uh, not only am I going to support you in this, which, yeah, I support you in doing whatever the hell you want. But why do I have to, when you're not there, refer to you as something that you are clearly not? There's no middle ground anymore. It, it, it's, it's, I feel like everything has gone insane around me. Maybe I'm insane. I, I don't know. But I know that the world we're living in just doesn't make sense anymore. Um, it just, I shouldn't read articles on my phone. I shouldn't watch clips from debates on my phone because it it just gets me more confused as to the world that I'm living in and again I have nothing against any of these people conservative or liberal believe what you want to believe live your way but don't force it on anybody else I'm never going to tell someone who's uh, I don't even know what they're called. I don't even know what the correct term is anymore. Someone who is born one gender who feels that they're another. I'm gonna. T- I'm never gonna tell them they don't have that right. And honestly, if I see somebody giving them shit, I'm probably gonna get involved and beat that person up because I don't like bullies. I've been bullied my whole life by my family, by people I've worked with, by people in school. I Nobody has that right to force anything on someone else, conservative or liberal. When did we become a nation that tells people how to live their lives instead of a nation that minds their own fucking business? I, that's that. That's why I'm having so much confusion and so much trouble with everything right now. Why is it... Why does what I think of you or what they think of you or what whoever thinks of you have any bearing on the truth that you feel you're living? I don't get it. And... 
as someone who was bullied, as someone who was told, no, you're living the wrong way, you're doing this, you're doing that, I don't want the people that told me that I was living the wrong way, that I was doing the wrong thing, I don't want them to respect what I'm doing. I don't want them to understand what I'm doing. I want to be left alone. I want to be allowed... This is Sadie, one of my chocolate labs. Um, I, I, I don't need other people's validation of who I am. Nobody needs that. You're who you are. Be you. And if someone doesn't like it, why do you care? If they're actively persecuting you, yes, you have the right to do something about it. But if they call you the wrong gender on an airplane because they got a screaming kid and they're not paying attention and they don't really know, why is that a hate crime? I, I just, I don't get how polarized everything has become. It, it's just insanity on both sides. And where is just the normal person like me who I don't agree with, like, I'm not. How can I put this? I'm a Christian. And there are things that I don't agree with, like abortion. Um, I don't have a problem with gay marriage because, like I said, I've got two of two very guys who I consider very close friends that I worked with. Uh, they just adopted a kid and they've given him, like, the best life imaginable. Like, they bought this kid a snowmobile. They bought this kid a four-wheeler. They, they're getting him a motorcycle license. Like, I mean, he, he hit the jackpot with these two guys. And I bust their balls. I'm like, hey, you guys can adopt me too. And um, so, like, I, I respect gay marriage because I understand that I was born straight and I've always been straight. Um, I never decided to be straight. I just am. Um, I'm assuming because that's all I've ever known that gay guys are and lesbians or whatever are that because that's all they've ever known they've only been attracted to that so I, I can't tell them that's wrong I can't tell them that they're living in sin when they have a more committed relationship than I did with my first wife um, a longer relationship than both of my marriages combined? That's not my business. The Bible says one thing. The Bible says homosexuality is wrong. Um, it also says cheating on your spouse is wrong, and I did that in my first marriage. We're all sinners, and that's why Christ died for us. He's the only one who can judge. And there's that whole, there's that story of um, the adulterous woman and they're going to stone her. And Jesus says to the crowd, he's like, okay, whoever here is without sin, you're the one who's casting the first stone. And all these self-righteous, conservative religious people were put in their place because the one person who was perfect, the one person without sin, called them out and said, look, you're all sinners. You're all pieces of shit. And so they all kind of like faded away, which um, is a very human thing to do. You're very self-righteous until someone calls you out and then you fade away. And um, he's left there with this adulterous woman and she says, do you condemn me too? Or she says, you know, are you gonna are you gonna condemn me? And he looks around, he says He says, Everybody else is gone. I don't condemn you, just go away and don't do that anymore. 
um, knowing full well that as a human, she's a broken person, she's a broken being, and she's probably going to sin again. She is going to sin again. Um, we're all sinners. We all have our own special sin that keeps pulling us back in. Every time I'm out, they pull me back in like the Godfather. Um, we're all imperfect. We're all living our own lives. As long as you're not hurting someone else, as long as you're not hurting children, hurting animals, if you're trying to be the best person that you can, I respect that. And I'm going to leave you alone because I want you to leave me alone. And I, I realized that I've, I've been rambling for over a half an hour now. And um, I just, I had to get this stuff out. I had to basically talk through it for myself to try and understand what's going on right now with everything around me. Um, my son is 19 years old. He is of the generation where it's like this acceptance of everything and just I can't even describe it because I don't I don't fully understand it but he um, he says oh you're transphobic you're this you're that and maybe by the definitions of society and the way that society looks at things being indifferent to it is considered phobic of it um i have ran into people who are they're they and not he or she. Um, what's that? I think that's called non-binary. And I've had conversations with them. Uh, I've hung out with them at fire pits and stuff. I don't care that they were whatever they viewed themselves as. It's not that, oh, I don't care that that's your truth. It's I genuinely do not care what you're doing with your life as long as you're not hurting anyone. Why do we have to be one or the other? Why do we have to be all for the stuff that's uber liberal or all for uber conservative? Where is just the normal person who it's like, this doesn't bother me. I don't care. It doesn't affect me. Why are we letting all of these other people's beliefs on both sides of the spectrum drive how we live our lives? Why can't we just be ourselves and let everybody else be themselves? I don't get it and I don't understand why there's such a pressure to be on one side or the other? Why are we so polarized? Why are we on the verge of a second civil war over this? And, I mean, we, we can look at the fact that I live in Rhode Island and the beliefs of someone in Texas are going to affect my way of life in Rhode Island because they're going to vote for someone and I'm going to vote for someone different. And because the Electoral College works the way it does, they have a bigger say in who wins that election than I do in this state. 
Um, we go on and on about how we're a democratic nation. We go on and on about the freedom that we have. What freedom do we have when you got half the population saying, no, you can't be this, you can't be what you want to be, and we've got the other population saying, this is all true, this is all right, and, and you're wrong. It, it's two different sides telling each other that they're wrong. It's two complete polar opposites and absolutely no middle ground. And I think that because of that, we really have a lot of problems coming. Um, there's, a, there's a guy on YouTube that his videos pop up in my feed or whatever it's called, uh, Wrangler Star, and he always, he always talks about, beloved, we need to be ready for the coming struggle. He's more on the conservative side, and he's always going on about his guns and stuff. And I have guns. I have a lot of guns. Um, I don't feel the need to talk about them or show them to you or show you how I am set up to defend my home, my family, from anything from robbers to a foreign power. I mean, it's, that's not your business. That's my business. The same way it's not my business whether you're straight, lesbian, gay, male, but really female, female, but really male. It's none of my business. I don't care what you are. And it's not because I don't care about you. It's because you are you and I am me. But he's always, this guy is always talking about the coming struggle and the economic collapse. We're living it. We're living that struggle right now between uber conservatives and uber liberals. There's no middle ground anymore. So we're just at each other's throats every single day because you believe in the Bible and you believe in pagan, Wiccan, whatever. I'm afraid for the world that my son is going to inherit from us. I'm afraid what that's going to look like. I'm afraid of the fact that either side, uber conservative or uber liberal, will be in power in that world. I don't know what it's going to look like. I don't know what he's going to inherit from us, but I know he deserves better. The younger generation that we have now, our kids deserve better than what we're giving them. I'm going on 40 minutes here. And... I still haven't gotten out everything I want to get out. I still haven't said everything I want to say. I feel like we lost our way a long time ago. I feel like... I feel like... The ideals that we cherished, the freedom of religion, the freedom of speech, the freedom of press, the ideals that we were founded on, I feel like we don't have them anymore. Um, freedom of religion. I'm free to be a Christian and to live with Christian values. You're free to do whatever you want. You're free to be Jewish, Muslim, Wiccan, pagan. 
the satanic whatever. You're free to do all that. I don't care. That's not my problem. Freedom of speech. If I call someone he instead of they, I get in trouble. If I say something against the ruling majority, the, the Republicans or the Democrats, I'm persona non grata. If I were to say, and I see this all the time with these people who they get online and they start using racial slurs and they start complaining or homophobic slurs or transphobic slurs or whatever, and then they're shocked when they lose their job. You have the freedom of speech to say whatever you want. And your job has the freedom to say that doesn't align with what we feel. That's, that's going against us and they can fire you for it. Why do we feel the need when we're consumed by hatred? And I was a racist person. I was a homophobic person for a long time. And then I became Christian. And I realized, you know what? All those people that I hated, all those people that I said were less than, were, were bad people, were this, were that, I'm exactly the same as them because I'm a sinner too. So Christianity for me has become not judging anyone. Judge not, lest ye be judged. It's, I mean, I can't tell you the number in the chapter, but it's in there somewhere. Um, forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. When did Christianity become this oppressive theocracy in the same way that Islam is in the Middle East? And why did we let it become that? Our, uh, to go back to our freedoms there, the freedom of speech, we don't really have freedom of speech. Um, because on both sides of the spectrum, if you say something too liberal, you're wrong. If you say something too conservative, you're wrong. And you can lose your job. Um, if you're ignorant and you're hateful and espousing racist beliefs, ra transphobic beliefs, homophobic beliefs, and you're like putting that out there and like that's your whole thing. Thomas Jefferson, one of the founding fathers, had a quote. He said, freedom of speech does not give you the right to yell fire in a crowded room. You can, you're free to have your beliefs. You're free to have your, your feelings about things. But your freedom of speech ends the moment that that speech is being used to oppress someone. And that goes for both sides. That goes for conservative Christians getting in the face of alternative LGBTQ. I know there's more letters. I don't know what they are. Um, that goes for Christians telling those people, hey, look, you're wrong and you're, you're this, you're that. And that goes for the liberals the, the, that are that, that are whatever they are telling the Christians that they're wrong. Why is there this obsession with you have to be one or the other? Why can't we just shut the hell up and leave each other alone? Um, I live in a very rural conservative area. Um, I don't talk politics with anybody. I have, um, I belong to a fairly conservative church, Christian church. 
I won't talk politics with members of the church. I won't talk politics with the guy that I go and cook moonshine with and shoot rats with in his backyard. Um, because it's not my business what you believe. Why does everyone think it's their business when it's not? And when did we become a people that had to be one or the other? Why can't we just be ourselves? Um, it's about 45 minutes now I've been rambling. I don't know if anyone will watch this. I don't know if this will create backlash for me. Um, this is just me trying to express discomfort and confusion at what society has become. What our nation has become. I could I could speak I could talk for another forty five minutes. I'm not proud. It's a, it's a reference to Alice's restaurant, Arlo Guthrie. Um, you can get anything you want at Alice's restaurant, excepting Alice. If you don't get that reference, uh, you have not lived a good life in terms of enjoying yourself. So look up Alice's Restaurant, and um, you'll enjoy it. It's just a fun, fun song, rambling song. Um, <laughs> I think we're on the verge of something here. And I think that it's not good. I think that the corporate government owned and ruled by corporate entities has polarized us so much for their own benefit that the world is not going to be the same place in five years or ten years or twenty-five years. Unless, honestly, I mean, what am I going to say? Unless we do something about it, what can we do? Our votes don't matter. It's not a real democracy when the popular vote is won by one guy, but the Electoral College, and please, if you understand the Electoral College, explain it to me in idiot's terms, because I don't, I don't get it. But we, we don't have a say. And we're just letting this, this corporate controlled government divide us more and more and more. Even to the point where they're making movies about, about it. They made that Civil War movie where Nick Offerman is president and the guy from um, Narcos is, is a journalist and they're going across America and blah, blah, blah. There's a big civil war going on and nobody really knows what they're fighting about. Do we really know what we're fighting about? They're making movies about us fighting ourselves. And we're eating it up and still fighting ourselves. While they get rich. And my father made $17 an hour as a machinist at a factory that made parts for jet engines and cruise missiles. He made $17 an hour. We had a house. We had two cars. I went to a private school. $17 an hour is nothing now. That's Burger King and McDonald's pay. Because all of those people just, all of the, the baby boomers sucked up that money and it's sitting in their bank accounts. So inflation's gone through the roof. 
And those corporate entities are just eating it up. They're taking that money through subscriptions and and different forms of payment, automatic payment that we don't even realize we're paying. And at the same time, they're telling us that these people are our enemy and those people are our enemy. Because the most dangerous thing in the world to them is all of us looking at it and saying, they're our enemy. The corporate conglomerate government, the for-profit entity that rules us, is our enemy. I'm not by any means advocating any violence. I'm lamenting the fact that as a democracy, as a quote-unquote democracy, we're a scam. We have no say in those who rule over us. We are not a people, uh, we are not a government for the people by the people. We're a government for the government to make money. What the hell happened? I don't know. I guarantee you, you don't know either. Because you can't say it's the liberals' fault. You can't say it's the conservatives' fault. It's the people who's pitting us against each other. Maybe you got something out of this video. Maybe you didn't. Maybe you think I'm an asshole. Maybe you think I'm a genius. Maybe you think I'm crazy. Maybe I'm all of those things. I don't know anymore. I don't know why we can't just leave each other alone. I don't know. I guess I've rambled long enough. It's uh, 52 minutes and 30-something seconds right now. I don't know if anyone will watch this. I don't really care. I hope if you do watch it and that you watched it to this point, it makes you think. I hope it makes you as scared as I am for what's coming for our kids. But I don't know what you should do. I don't know what any of us should do. We're stuck in this system that perpetuates itself. It keeps us in our place. My favorite Bible character is John the Baptist. He always described himself as a voice alone crying out in the wilderness. Um... And I'm not comparing myself to John the Baptist. I'm not saying I'm John the Baptist or anything like crazy like that. That's what I feel like, though. I feel like I'm that voice just crying out into the wilderness, crying out into the middle of a storm, saying, why? Why are we doing this to each other? I think there's a real relevance to that feeling that the world is going crazy and trying to convince us that we're crazy for seeing that the world is going crazy. I don't know what the answer is. I wish I did. And if this video goes anywhere, there's going to be... And there, if there people get into arguments in the comments and start saying uber liberal stuff or uber uber conservative stuff it's just going to prove my point
This is going to polarize people because that's all anything does. Russian bots are going to comment one thing or the other and get all of the internet keyboard warriors going crazy. If this video goes anywhere, it's probably going to get like 12 views, six views. Who the fuck knows? Who cares? This, this was basically talk therapy for me, trying to get out my confusion and my disgust with what society has become. I wish that this was a more positive video. I had a lot of negative feelings I needed to get out. I had a lot of confusion that I needed to get out. And unfortunately, it didn't come out in a very positive way. All I can say is... I don't know you... I don't care what you're doing with your life, one way or the other. As long as you're not hurting anybody, I love you and I pray for you. I hope wherever you are, you're comfortable and that God is with you. Thank you.